seated if you can. I want to teach for a few minutes now. We'll walk with the time. But I want you to be sensitive. Because whilst I'm teaching, the Lord is touching people. The Lord is healing the sick. The Lord is bringing restoration to men and women. Praise the name of the Lord. Now let's discuss encounters very quickly. Job chapter 42. Please help them, help them. Just keep them maybe on their seats or somewhere. Job chapter 42 and verse 5. Let's get to scripture now. Job chapter 42 and verse 5. If you can see it projected, please read with me. Ready? One to read. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now my eye seeth thee. I heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now you have brought me into a realm of encounter. In Exodus chapter 3, the Bible tells us that Moses, having run away from Egypt after killing one of the Egyptians, he was banished and he ran away. The Bible says he was sending his father in Lord sheep, Jethro. Are we together? Then the Bible says that Moses saw a scenery that caught his attention. He said he saw a bush that was bony and yet not consumed. It was God luring Moses into an experience that would prepare him to advocate the exodus of God's people. Then the Bible says Moses said, I will turn aside and see this great sight. And when God saw that he turned aside, he said, Moses, take off your shoes for where thou standest is holy ground. And then through a series of other encounters, he revealed himself as I am to Moses. He said, now on the strength of this encounter, go to your half-brother Ramesses, who is now the Pharaoh of Egypt, and tell him, thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews, the one you met in the wilderness, let my people go. When he went and met Ramesses, who was now the Pharaoh of Egypt, after communicating all that, you would think that Pharaoh would say, wow, Moses, okay, go. He refused. And he said, who is this one that sent you? And Moses threw his rod as a token of that encounter. And Pharaoh laughed. He said, you are bringing this childish manifestation to Egypt, the center of wizardry. Chanes, Chambers, come, show this man that this is Egypt. They threw their rods and they also became serpents. To cut the long story short, on the strength of that encounter, it got to a point where the firstborn of Pharaoh died and he had to release the people of God. Gave them gold, gave them silver, did not even allow their bread to rise. And he sent them with the outstretched arm of God. Your exploits in this kingdom, I will repeat myself, is predicated on your encounters. But there are four levels of encounters. Let me run through them very quickly. And the order of those encounters also matter. I'm going to be communicating them according to the order. Number one, very quickly. The first encounter that any man and any woman who desire to be used by God would have to go through is an encounter with Jesus, the Son of the Living God. Write it down, please. No matter what else you encounter, if you have not encountered Jesus, the Son of the Living God, you have not begun your journey in the faith life. This looks simple and this looks basic. But if we do not help people, we will have so many people in church, but very few people who are sincerely born again. The first encounter in this order is an encounter with Jesus, the Son of the Living God. Can I tell you this? Jesus is not just a prophet. Jesus is not just a wise sayer. Jesus is not just a spiritual leader. If you define Jesus by those terms, you do not know him. Who do men say that I, the son of man, is? And some said you are Elijah. Some said you are one of the prophets. He said, but you, what is your verdict about my person? 
And Peter speaking by the Spirit said, I know who thou art. Thou art Christ, the Son of the living God. And he said, Peter, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. That is the revelation of the sonship of Jesus has to come from the Father. Listen very carefully. It is not enough to believe in Jesus. What you believe about him also matters. There are people who believe in Jesus as a prophet. There are people who believe in Jesus as one of those revered leaders. The Bible tells us, and from the authority of scripture we stand, that Jesus is the son of the living God. It is important to understand he is not an archangel. He is not one of the angels. He is not just a spiritual being. Jesus himself, the Bible calls him the the express image of the invisible God. The revelation of the Father to us. Jesus. If you do not encounter Jesus, you can still be in church. You can write books. You can even be a man of God. But I assure you by the authority of scripture, you are not saved. For my Bible says there is no other name under heaven given unto men by which we must be saved. You don't give your life to the Holy Spirit. You don't give your life to an angel. No, the, the administrator of the life of God, the advocate, the mediator is Jesus, the son of the living God. Please shout that name. Say Jesus. An encounter with Jesus, the son of the living God. There are three blessings that follow this encounter very quickly if you truly encounter jesus the son of the living god there are three blessings number one is access to the life of god this is the first blessing john chapter 3 and verse 16 a popular scripture says for god so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten but now he's not his one and only begotten Today he is the firstborn of we the begotten. Are we together? He says he gave his one and only begotten. That whosoever believes in him. No prejudice, no sentiments. Whosoever believes in him. Shall not perish. But have everlasting life. The word everlasting. Is not a very accurate translation. Of the Greek word zoe. The Greek word zoe does not just mean life without end. For in reality, everybody has everlasting life. Is that true? When you die in this physical realm, you do not cease to exist. The issue is location, not continuity of living. Those in hell are still alive. Lazarus and the rich man. Even when they both left the earth realm. So the life Jesus came to give us, it's not just everlasting. It's a quality of life. God's own life. Not just the God kind of life. It is not the kind. It is the very life of God. Apostle John said, This is the record that God has given us the way eternal life. He said, But he designed the administration of that life such that that life comes through an encounter with his son. So that he that had the son had eternal life. So I know that you have the life of God by verifying whether you have met the son. If you have not met the son, you may have another kind of life. But it is not God's life. The first blessing of an encounter with the son of the living God is access to the life of God. Number two. The second blessing is access to righteousness. Romans chapter 5 and verse 17. Righteousness is the nature of God. It is very powerful. Righteousness is one of the things that man lost through the fall. Men like E.W. Kenyon would define righteousness as the ability to stand before the Father's presence without a sense of guilt, inferiority, and condemnation. But it's more than that. Righteousness is the very nature of God. Are we together now? Yes. When you are justified by faith, you have access to righteousness. 
It is righteousness that qualifies you to now be a partaker of that divine life. Because the condition to be a carrier of God's life is that you must have righteousness equal to that of Jesus. So he administers his righteousness. Justification by faith, the Bible says. Here's how the Bible puts it. It says, Christ has delivered us, redeemed us from the cause of the law. Being made a cause for us, for it is written in the Mosaic law, Cost is every man that hangs upon the tree. Why? That the blessing of Abraham. The blessing of Abraham is not cars and houses. No. The blessing of Abraham is justification by faith. May come upon all those who believe. To the end that them be justified. Now might receive the promise of the spirit through faith. Access to righteousness. The blessedness of encountering the son of God. And then the third blessing very quickly is access to what we call grace Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3 a concept that has been so talked about but rarely understood access to grace what is grace is more than just unmerited favor Ephesians chapter 1 please and verse 3 this is the definition of grace blessed be God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who had blessed us, the Bible says, with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. The grace of God is defined as every spiritual blessing, every possibility that is contained in God, given to the saints, only through the office of Christ. This is called grace. So the power of God is grace. The wisdom of God is grace. Speed is grace. Are we together now? The ability of the spirit is grace. Every spiritual possibility that is contained in God and released to the saints only through the office of the Christ is called grace. It's beyond that which is received as new birth. No. Grace is like the spiritual warehouse that contains all the possibilities that are in God. But the authorized channel for access is Christ. Are we together? So when you encounter the Son of God, you have access to His life, you have access to righteousness, you have access to grace. In fact, let me add one more. One more that is so needed in our world today. You have access to what the Bible calls the peace of God. Write it down. This is what money cannot buy. This is what education cannot provide. Listen very carefully. This is what wealth and fame and human achievements cannot provide. In fact, one of the dividing, the clearest proof that you have met Jesus is the peace of God. He said, peace I give you. My peace I leave with you. Not as the world gives. Peace. A state of restfulness. Even in the midst of storms, you are happy. For reasons that men cannot understand. Let me tell you this. If you have not experienced the peace of God in your life, depression will weigh you down to death. We live in a society today where people both young and old are adopting all kinds of diseases and infirmities. Teenagers are carrying high blood pressure because we have not learned the power of the peace of God. It is the peace of God that grants you grace to sit in the midst of plenty or little and still be happy, not defined by the things around you. The peace of God. That someone tells you your car was just stolen and you say, wow, that's not good. But not enough to hang yourself. Uh -uh. The peace of God. This generation needs to understand once again the power of the peace of God. The most accurate definition of wealth is peace. No matter what you have, if you do not have the peace that comes with it, you are really not blessed. We are just on point one. An encounter with the Son of God. That you get to that point where like the Apostle Paul, you have made peace with God and you have the peace of God. Peace with God means that you know that you are one with Him. Both in this life and after this life. You're no longer afraid of death. 
because you have peace with God. But then you have the peace of God in your heart that shields you from the vicissitudes of life. So you laugh at storms, not out of a sense of irresponsibility, but you are unperturbed by the vicissitudes of life. I believe in the peace of God. I truly believe in the peace of God. Please hear me. The Lord is speaking to someone. The way you are living your life, you are going to be depressed to death. You need to embrace the peace of God tonight. The peace of God does not get you saved. No. Having a Christian name does not get you saved. Participating in church activity does not get you saved. The formula is in Romans chapter 10 from verse 8 and 10. The Bible says the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. The word of faith that we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy heart, with your mouth and then with your heart, the Lord Jesus, verse 9 says, it says, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Somewhere before the end of this program, I'm going to make an altar call today. And there are many of you, the Lord is already speaking to you sincerely. You may be a sincere person, very well meaning, but you truly need an encounter with Jesus. Can I touch on one more encounter for tonight? Number two, the second encounter that you need is an encounter with the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Write it down. We need this dimension of encounter in the middle belt. It is, it is, it is an encounter that is needed not just in Plateau State alone. The middle belt so desperately needs an encounter with the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Please look up. This is not about Pentecostalism at all. Please do not confuse what I'm teaching here. This is not some, some some manifestation of irresponsible people i'm talking about the genuine encounter because many have mocked the ministry of the holy spirit we have ignored his ministry so even though we have preserved morality we continue to labor in the flesh to achieve things that only God worked as an ordinary man for 30 years until the heavens were opened over him and the Bible says that the Holy Spirit descended upon him in the similitude of a dove. That became the beginning of his supernatural ministry. The first revelation of God in the Bible, the Godhead that was revealed in the Bible, that we see operating was the Holy Spirit. Genesis chapter 1, the Bible says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Verse 2 says, Now the earth was dark and void and formless. Is a Hebrew word, tohu abohu, confusion and chaos. And then the Bible says, And the Spirit of God hovered round the face of the waters. This is my Bible. There was no man in Scripture from Genesis to Revelation, not even Jesus himself who was able to satisfy the Father's desire outside of the participation of the Holy Spirit. Here's how Paul puts it, speaking to the church in Corinth. He said, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, we recite it after every service, but now you hear it from the Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, he said, the love of God and the fellowship, it's the word koinonia, the sharing together, the participation, of the Holy Ghost. He says, let it be with you. Let it abide with you. The Holy Ghost is the one who can turn ordinary men into signs and wonders. John chapter 14 from verse 16 to 18. Jesus himself is teaching now. John 14 from verse 16, please. He began to introduce them to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Watch this. They had seen his invincible life. This son of a carpenter had now become a sign and a wonder. Healing the sick, raising the dead, 
multiplying bread. This man became invincible single handedly. He was responsible for the exploits of ordinary men. Here in Joss, there were mighty men and women who were raised. Ordinary people. Some of them were not educated. Some of them did not have any enlightenment. But they stumbled across this strange personality of the Holy Spirit. Until today, we continue to talk of their exploits, even upon the plateau. They left prophetic words before they went to be with the Lord by the ministry of the Holy Spirit. We talk in Nigeria about men like Archbishop Benson Idahosa. We talk about men and women like Apostle Babalola. We talk of men and women who did mighty and terrible things. Those men confessed themselves that they were powerless except for the Holy Spirit. You read about God's generals, Catherine Kuhlman, M.P. Semple McPherson, William Seymour, the white eyed evangelist that turned their cities upside down. These men and women were ordinary people. Maria Woodward Eater. Very ordinary. And yet they met the Holy Spirit. Do you believe what I'm teaching you? The Holy Spirit is not wind, the Holy Spirit is not anointing oil. The Holy Spirit is not some church emblem. He is a real personality that by faith and hunger you can step into a dimension of relationship with Him whose benefit can be proven in your lifetime. The Holy Spirit is not a preacher's advocacy. No. Hear me, Plato. The Holy Spirit is not for men of God. The Holy Spirit is for those in government. The Holy Spirit is for career people. The Holy Spirit is for family people. Don't ignore him. Jesus did not ignore him. When God sends you, Isaiah 48 and verse 16, He never sends you alone. Let me give someone a word of hope as we prepare to pray. When he sends you, he never sends you alone. The B part of this verse says, It says, The Lord God and his spirit have sent me. The Lord and his spirit have sent me. Just because you cannot see him does not mean he is not real. The only way to understand the Holy Spirit is to understand marriage. When two people are about to get married, the gentleman and the lady, they ask them questions. Will you take this one? They don't even listen to what they are saying. They just say yes so that they finish the meeting. And the meaning of that is that there is a covenant that binds them. Watch what happens. That as soon as that lady becomes married to that man, she no longer bears her son name. She's under the influence of that man. Now watch this. Even if she were a cleaner and she marries a CEO, she becomes a CEO's wife immediately, not later on. What you think or don't think is irrelevant. Are we together now? Let's say a billionaire or a millionaire is in this place and the wife just walks up here and says, I donate one billion. Whether she discussed with her husband or not is their issue to settle at home. As far as we are concerned, the journalist will narrate it this way. His eminence or his excellency or his whatever, represented through his evil wife, donated one billion. Is that true? That means the wife never went alone. She went and carried his name. She carried his reputation with her. And even though he may not like what she did, he has to defend his reputation because he's her husband. It will be irresponsible of him to leave his wife. Listen to me. Are you understanding what I'm telling you now? So she's now called Mrs. His name. And on the strength of that, she can make decrees. She may not have up to a million naira in her account. 
Yet she will make decrees that are bigger than her size, trusting his reputation to defend it. Hear me. This is what happens with our ministry with the Holy Spirit. We are ordinary people in ourselves. But you are that bride. There is a faithful husband that backs you. Man of God, don't go to that crusade ground alone. You will be disappointed. There is a betrothal. There is a marriage that has happened. When you speak, you don't speak alone. When you cast out devils, they obey because the jealousy of your husband is defending your statement. Hear me. The secret behind the mysterious results that we produce, make no mistakes about it. It is not the strength of the flesh. Jesus came to Nicodemus by night and said, Rabbi, we know that thou art a man sent from God. He said, for no man can do these things except God be with him. There are results that are not within the realm of man. You cannot produce such a result. So when I stand here, I am a man in the physical, but I am a bride in the spirit. There is a jealous husband. Walk with that consciousness and you will step into a life of signs and of wonders. Walk there as a career person. Walk there as a commissioner. Walk there as a governor. You are not just sitting down and writing. Spirit of the living God. Your namesake is at stake here. I receive wisdom. I receive guidance. How dare you look at someone on a wheelchair and tell him to stand up? By what strength? How dare you look at a destiny that has been tied for ages, sometimes before you were born, and dare to announce in a moment? He said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. That's the secret. Because he had anointed. The word anointed means ordained. He has legitimized my operations. Charles, you are not weak. You are only weak when you are alone. Plato states, you are not weak. Africa, it is not the color of our skin. It is not our educational limitation. It is our, res our resisting and neglecting the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Hear me, Plato. My life is proof as an inspiration that if the Holy Ghost holds your hands, He will take you to the nations. He will defy all the laws of men. Is God blessing someone? Someone come. Any come, gentlemen. Watch this. This is me walking alone through life, confused. I come here and they say you are not this tribe. I come here and they say you are an African. I'm so limited. And then I come and hold his hands, the Holy Ghost. I hold his hands and go back to that same business. I hold his hands and go to ministry. While I'm preaching, he's with me. You are just not seeing him. So when I say in the name of Jesus, blind eyes open. It's not just my mouth. There is the jealousy of the spirit. His assignment is to see that Christ is glorified in your life. And he will shift anything to make sure that Christ is glorified. Let the way eat of your glory cover us let the light of your river flow let the truth of your kingdom let it reign in us let the ways of your glory fall listen to me dear man of God you may have eloquence and oratory, but if you do not have the Spirit of God, you will still be disappointed. Dear civil servant, you may have your certificate and your training, but if you do not have the Holy Spirit, you are bound to have a plethora of frustrations. Dear family man, you may be a responsible husband and a father, but life requires more than that. Even demons know. There are certain results that the moment you see it, it's a revelation that that man is not alone. Occultists know this. Non-Christians know this. You cannot produce results beyond a certain threshold except God is with you.
I was stupid enough to hold his hands and say, Holy Spirit, I may not have what it takes. I may not be an American, respectfully speaking. I may not be a European. I may not conform to the standards that men have put, but I'm ready to hold your hands. Someone God is speaking to you. You need to take the Holy Ghost serious. You've been having board meetings on church growth. Board meetings on increase. Thank God for those things. But nothing will replace the power that His presence brings. You can fake power. You can not fake His presence. The reality of the Holy Spirit. Do you believe what I'm sharing with you? He changed my life. When I met the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God can take you from anywhere to anywhere, from anything to anything. Don't give me the excuse of your background, believe me. Don't give me the excuse of tribal sentiments, not when the Holy Ghost, if it is the genuine Holy Spirit. He will turn your life into a sign and a wonder. This is not a preacher's talk. He will bring beauty and glory out of your life. You will walk in dimensions of extraordinary results. Just when men think they have exhausted all that can come from you, then he comes with another dimension. You will never be able to do ministry without the Holy Spirit. Plato said, it will take more than formulating policies in addition to that which the members of parliament are involved with hear me i speak to you by the spirit of the lord as a territory we need to one more time say maranatha come spirit of the living god come beyond the pentecostal phenomenon come come to our government come to our members of parliament come to the business people come to members come to preachers When he comes, he brings guidance. When he comes, he brings direction. When he comes, he brings empowerment. I have many things to tell you now, Jesus said, but ye cannot bear them. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come? He says he will guide you. He will guide you. He will take up that which is of me and he will give it unto you. The Holy Ghost is responsible for the signs and the wonders that you see. The Holy Ghost is responsible for kingdom influence. You can be as true and as right as you are, but except the power of the Holy Ghost is upon you, you may not do much in this kingdom. For the race is not to the swift, the Bible declares. The battle is not for the song. Mm -hmm. I learned the excellency of the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And I forever hold his hands. My life is useless without him. He is a factor. That one factor. Bringing you into a dimension of spiritual reality. Please listen to me. We need to embrace the ministry of the Holy Spirit. He is the extraordinary factor in a man's life. God making ordinary men to become supernatural. Let the Holy Spirit be involved in your business and you will be surprised what will come out of your life. Let the Holy Spirit be involved in your ministry. Believe me, I know what I am saying. Let the Holy Spirit be involved in your family and you will marvel and wonder at the superior dimensions that His presence can bring. In one minute, wherever you are, I'd like you to pray and say, Holy Spirit, I need you afresh. I need you afresh. Let it be a genuine prayer. Are you praying? I need you afresh. Hallelujah. Listen. Write this down very quickly. There are four benefits 
of encounter with the Holy Spirit and we stop here for today. We'll take the other encounters tomorrow morning. Do the best that you can as much as God grants you grace to follow or be around. The first assignment of the Holy Spirit is that He's the revealer of the world. The Holy Spirit is the revealer of the world. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 2 from verse 9 and 12. Write it down because of time. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 from verse 9 and 12. The Bible says, but as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God had prepared for them that love him. Read on. The Bible says, verse 10 now, but God had revealed them. So they are no longer a mystery. God had revealed them to us. How? By His Spirit. It says, for the Spirit has the ability to search all things. Yea, the deep things of God. Next verse. The Bible says, For what man knoweth the things of man, save the Spirit of man which is in him? So also, no man can know the things of God, except the Spirit of God. You read down to verse 12. The Bible says now, hallelujah, not later, not tomorrow, now. We have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God to the end that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. The Holy Spirit is a revealer. A revealer of the secrets and the mysteries of God. Number two, the Holy Spirit is the confirmer of the word. The Holy Spirit, it is within His office. Even though the Holy Spirit still plays a role in your new birth experience, there is a separate encounter with His office. And the Bible says He's the confirmer of the word. Isaiah 44, from verse 24 and 26. Isaiah 44, from verse 24 and 26. The key verse is verse 26. The Bible says, Can we see 26? It says that confirmed the word of his servants. I'm hurrying up because of time. Read from 24 to 26. He says he performs the counsel of his messengers. So if I speak like I did to this gentleman, I do not have that kind of power to impart any grace. But the Holy Ghost is a confirmer. The Holy Ghost is the seal. He validates that it's fully God that sent you. Number three, this is an important one. When you encounter the Holy Ghost, you have encountered the custodian of the anointing. The administration of the anointing is in the office of the Holy Spirit. Please listen to this. Isaiah 61, you can read that. Micah chapter 3 and verse 8. Please give it to us. Just write Isaiah 61 for reference. Micah chapter 3 and verse 8. I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. I am full of power, but it came by the Spirit of the Lord. Every other spiritual practice and perhaps religion does not depend on relationship for power. For instance, if you go to meet a Havalis, you don't need to know his name. He doesn't need to know your name. You don't need to know where he's from. You just tell him, I need power, maybe for some political thing or whatever it is. And he conjures something and gives you. It is only the faith life that requires relationship for power. Your power is a derivative of your relationship. Are we together? He is the custodian of the anointing. Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. But you shall receive power, the Bible says. After that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, you shall receive power, not before. After that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, He precedes the power. That power will make you witnesses unto me. In Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the utmost part of the earth. Number four, the Holy Spirit represents the voice of God. Write that down. The Holy Spirit represents the voice of God to the believer. First Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1. Apostle Paul mentoring his son in the gospel Timothy. 
He had this to say. He says, but the Spirit speaketh expressly. The Spirit speaketh expressly. That in the latter times, he said, some shall depart from the faith. Do you like prayer? He spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. We are going to pray for a few minutes. Just two prayer points. Number one is the grace for many of you who are yet to encounter the Lord Jesus Christ. Soon after this prayer, I'll make an altar call before I minister. And then for those who have encountered the Lord Jesus Christ, you are going to pray that the benefits of salvation he said bless the lord oh my soul forget not his benefits there are benefits you are going to pray that the benefits of salvation become real in your life and then number two the ministry of the holy spirit becomes real in your life lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray just for a few minutes and we're done for tonight is someone praying all the overflows please pray those following us from all over the globe online pray this is the time to pray the benefits that come with the encounter of the son of the living god the life of god access to righteousness the reality of the workings of his grace peace that surpasses all understanding are you praying Pray for the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Spirit of the living God in a fresh dimension. I embrace you, I embrace your ministry. I embrace you, I embrace your ministry. I embrace you, I embrace your ministry. I embrace you in my ministry. I embrace you in my life. Pray. I embrace you in my business. I embrace you in leadership. I embrace you in government. You may be a politician here, pray. You may be a father in the land, pray. You may be a diplomat, a career person, an industrialist, pray. The ministry of the Holy Spirit, transforming the plateau to a sign and a wonder. Pray for your church, man of God. Spirit of the living God, I introduce you afresh to my assembly, to house on the rock just, to the body of Christ across the plateau. In a new way, let the wind of the Spirit come. hallelujah listen i believe with all my heart that god is doing something from tonight lord jesus is the way jesus is the answer for the world today above him there's no other Listen to me, we have but a few minutes tonight and all across this large auditorium, this, this theater, this space, the main church, all of the extensions inside and outside, there are people listening to me right now and the Holy Spirit is speaking to you that you have to win this war of destiny tonight. The Bible declares that as many who will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. Listen to me. In order of priority, the greatest and most superior encounter in your life is that encounter with the Son of the Living God. Every other thing that we do here tonight and for the days that come, that follow, is absolutely inferior to this one encounter. There are people scattered across whilst you heard me speak the holy ghost began to convict you 
that it is time for you to take Jesus serious. It's time for you to make that one decision. Embracing the life of Jesus. Acknowledging his lordship. This is beyond church. This is beyond religion. Whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord, he shall be saved. Now very quickly, I am going to count one to ten. And you are here, you are saying, Apostle, if you will lead me to make this noble decision, I am unashamed and I am ready to stand before Jesus. I like you to run like there is fire on the mountain and come and stand here. One. Are you celebrating Jesus? Two. Three. Run to Jesus. Saburai Kabani Nagode Cheto Kabani Ainagode. Run to Jesus. Don't be ashamed of Jesus tonight. Sujada ne na ke, Godia ne na ke, Sujada ne na ke, Godia ne na ke. This is the part of the song I like. Who is singing that song? Kaika shale hawa ye. Come to Jesus. Run to Jesus. Now listen to me. Coming to Jesus is not like coming to a funeral. No. Coming to Jesus is exchanging your weakness for his strength. Exchanging your limitation for his power. Every one of us who celebrate the faith life today have to make this decision. I salute every one of you and for those of you who are following online I like you to open up your heart and connect it matters that we participate in the global harvest someday Jesus is coming back I announce to you again life will not continue like this indefinitely a day will come when the trumpet will sound I assure you it will happen I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. One more time and I lead you to this prayer. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Now listen to me. 
all of you who are standing here my god such a strong presence of the holy spirit i'd like you to lift your right hand here at house on the rock just and i want to lead you to jesus the bible declares that whosoever comes to him will not perish regardless the past regardless the limitations jesus gives us new life i want you to say this prayer from the depth of your heart you're not reciting a poem jesus is right here at this crusade ground are you ready to pray very loud and very clear to your own hearing say after me lord jesus tonight i have heard your word i believe that you are the son of god i believe that you died for me i believe that you were raised up for my justification this night i make jesus my savior my lord and my king i receive eternal life into my spirit i receive the abundance of grace the gift of righteousness into my spirit and i declare based on the authority of scripture that from tonight and forever i am a child of god i am saved hallelujah give jesus a big hand clap years ago i remember watching reinhard bonke of blessed memory making this decision i was somewhere in the crowd when he was making that call and today he's joining the cloud of witnesses in heaven and seen as this noble ministry continues even after his departure listen to me you have made the noblest decision in your life and i congratulate you in the name of the lord jesus christ now very quickly there are a group of counselors please can you wave your hands now the counselors are waving their hands there are a number of you but all of you in concert i want you to obediently follow the man leading you you're going to be taken somewhere you may be given a few materials and then they'll just admonish you for a few minutes and you quickly join us god bless you let's honor them plateau just is this the best you can do celebrate them as they as they go i have a few minutes we'll soon be out of here I want to pray and speak over someone's life. Yesu nena gane oh Yesu bada tu kan kan fina Yesu nena gane Yesu na bada tu kan sing for me come I'm about to pray for you. In one minute I like you to pray everything that must leave your life this night not tomorrow this night 
here at this 19th anniversary please believe i'd like you to open your mouth in one minute and pray lift your voice and pray that one thing that must live your life for sure it says say unto god how terrible art thou in thy ways through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves to you lift your voice and pray Glad to pray. North Central pray. Nigeria pray. Africa pray. Call unto me and I will answer, the Bible declares. I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. hallelujah now this is what will happen we still have other days so we're not going to delay but we have a few minutes and i just feel stirred in my spirit just to speak a prayer and then whatever happens tonight i may not have the time to prophesy and speak because our time is gone and we have to respect time so that we're back to our homes but then i know that someone will leave this place completely transformed. There is power in the name of Jesus. There are miracles in the name of Jesus. There are breakthroughs in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Now I want to pray. Please do me a favor. Whoever falls under the anointing close to you, if you can do me a favor, whether you're an usher or not, please bring them here. We have just five minutes. Praise the Lord. There are people here who are under oppressions of darkness. Listen to me. My Bible declares. For this purpose was the Son of God made manifest that He may destroy, annihilate, liquidate. Don't just come out at random. Praise the Lord. I want to pray for you. And the moment I pray for you, inside, outside, everywhere, the power of God will come and bring life and liberty. For the Bible says, Now the Lord is that Spirit, it says. And that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Are you ready to pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, when I'm praying, I'm going to give you an instruction to shout that name, Jesus. And as you shout that name that is above every other name, every demon and every devil on the plateau that will not let you rest must give way. Lord, I pray that you honor your word. Here at House on the Rock, here at just plateau, it's time to experience liberty. Therefore, I declare, in the name of Jesus, blotting out every handwriting and every ordinance that spoke against us the bible declares that he nailed it to his cross therefore we place a sanction in the realm of the spirit to principalities and powers ordinances of darkness tying down the destinies of men it's time for you to go at the count of three i want you to shout that name jesus as you shout that name every chain that has held you bound must let you go are you ready to shout one two three shout jesus i command those chains go 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 in the name of jesus bring them out i cause yokes of darkness in the name of jesus every oppression bring them out my god shake it take it take it out families must be delivered right now bring them out in the name of Jesus every victim of oppression of darkness hear the word of the Lord I come by the apostolic and the prophetic and I declare in the name of Jesus be delivered now for upon Mount Zion help them the 
there shall be deliverance and holiness. Every spirit tying down any destiny, any spirit tying down families, it's time for you to go. Shanda Branda Skalika Tosiata Embrakate, help them please. Don't allow them to disturb our, our excellencies there, please. Let's have a few protocol people just stand to make sure that they do not miss. Hallelujah. Now listen. Listen. Look up, please. Hear me. There are families under the sound of my voice. It looks like nobody is able to rise. Just when you are about to rise. There are powers that bring you down. But right now, in the name of Jesus, any family under any kind of captivity, right now, I command those powers, be broken, be broken, be broken, be broken, be broken. Bring them out. Zechariah chapter 1 and verse 18. Son of man, what seest thou? And he said, I saw four horns. These are the horns that have lifted up themselves against Judah, against Jerusalem, so that no man doth lift up his head. Psalm 3. He says, How many are they that rise up against me? Many are they that say, where is your God? He said, but thou, O oh Lord, you are a shield for me. He calls him my glory. I prophesy again. The power of God is coming upon you. Any family here, under the sound of my voice, that have been oppressed by spirits, I'm saying it again. Be delivered right now. Release their destinies now. Release their families now. Someone open your mouth in one minute. Begin to declare, I'm a child of God. Everything stolen from my life. I command recovery, relationships, opportunities. Are you praying? Please don't be silent. And I will restore to you the years. Declare. My family. Pray, we're wrapping up. We're exalting Jesus in this place. I pray for everyone who is out here. Every spirit that has tied your life. You know my voice. I come as one sent by Elohim. In the name of Jesus at the count of three. Get out of their lives now. One, two, three. Go, go, go. Out of their destinies. Out of their destinies. Out of their families. We give you worship. Worship. The highest praise to the King. We give you worship. Worship. Highest praise to the King. So we bow down, we bow down. Highest praise to the King. So we lift up holy hands. Highest praise to the King. So we make our souls Hallelujah. Please look at me. We are not just wasting time here. You will be surprised to hear the testimonies that these people return me. He said he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in thunder. Let me speak to you. Every door that has refused to open over your life, I come tonight by the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic. I speak to every closed door. Hear the word of the Lord. Efata, be open here and Tita. Doors of opportunity, be open now. Every closed door, be open now. 
doors in ministry, doors in business, be open now. Including those I'm seeing outside, outside the building there. I command those doors open in the name of Jesus. Hear me? For everyone that has come for this meeting, between now and tomorrow morning, believe me, I stand by the God of my covenant and I declare you will return with strange testimonies. Hear me? For many of you, you will go to bed this night and the secrets of your destiny will be open to you. The Lord will show you your place in destiny. For some of you tonight, you are receiving divine direction. It will come in dreams and visions. Now, let me prophesy. If there is any power on the plateau fighting the gospel, if there is any power on the plateau fighting the advancement of men, all earth I speak to you. I speak to the elements of the supernatural. Let tonight be a night of judgment. And every family that is yet to, to experience liberty on the plateau, I declare by the Spirit of God, it begins from tonight. In the name of Jesus. All of you who are out here, I declare you completely delivered by the Spirit of grace. In Jesus' name. The encounter with the Word of God. The encounter with the Word of God. John chapter 1 and verse 1. Very quickly, the Bible says, In the beginning was the word and the word was with god and he said the word was god he says the same was in the beginning with god so the bible starts by telling us the word was with god in the beginning now listen even though jesus the person is called the word there is the word of god as the compendium of the methodologies of the kingdom the word of God as the compendium of the principles and the mysteries of the kingdom. So when I talk about this third encounter, I'm not just talking about an encounter with the son of the living God that leads to the new birth experience. I'm talking about an encounter with the logos of God. The word that is translated word is the Greek word logos and it means the thoughts of a man thoughts of a man that seek expression Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6 the prophet began to lament and he said my people are destroyed they perish for the lack of knowledge for the lack of knowledge Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18 I hope you're writing the scriptures down Ephesians chapter 4 I just quote it quickly for time's sake Paul was mentoring the church in Ephesus and he was attempting to diagnose their spiritual condition and he said this having their understanding darkened he says being alienated from the life of god through the ignorance that is in them hallelujah as important as being saved or born again as we know it to be is when you are saved and you just stop at that realm you will never be able to attain stature and maturity in the kingdom in fact the bible says it is because of god's commitment to our maturity that he gave on to some apostles he gave on to some prophets evangelists pastors and teachers he says for the perfecting the word perfecting there is the word maturing of the saints that the saints now being matured would do the work of the ministry to the end that we all as a corporate body we come into the fullness of the stature of the measure of christ it says not to to and fro by every wind of doctrine and the slight of men wherein they lie to deceive are we together so an encounter with the word of god 
is an encounter with the mysteries of the kingdom please say after me the mysteries of the kingdom one more time can you shout it say the mysteries of the kingdom in matthew chapter 13 and verse 11 jesus is teaching teaching a crowd just as this and he was introducing them to the lifestyle of the kingdom he began his discourse in what we know theologically to be the beatitudes opening them up to the way the kingdom function and he said 13 verse 11 matthew he said because it has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven so in this kingdom we excel and we reign on the strength of the principles and the mysteries of the kingdom that we know there is a dimension of jesus called jesus the way he said i am the way i'm not only the truth and life i am the way god's authorized method jesus the way and if you do not encounter the word of god you will never be able to understand the principles listen carefully the patterns and the methodologies of god let me tell you something about the glory of god the glory of god is only revealed as an attestation that his patterns have been kept if you ever see the glory of god revealed in the life of an individual revealed within a territory a church a business the glory of god comes to confirm that his patterns have been kept and so if you do not understand spiritual patterns you will never be able to host or reveal the glory of god if you're with me please say amen whether it's in finances ministry career your influence every manifestation of the glory of god revealed in scripture came when his patterns were kept now look up please god in, is a god of systems that means in his character every time he's about to introduce a dimension of himself listen carefully he would demonstrate or simulate that experience once and create spiritual principles around that experience so that by engaging the principles you can make for continuity of that dimension are we together now so he made man and he made woman and he programmed a principle of reproduction are we together so that if you need more men you will not have to call on him and say come create new people you engage the principle are you getting me now so you can be born again and yet your life will never capture the riches that are in christ because you have encountered the son of god you have even encountered the spirit but you have not encountered the logos there is an encounter with the word of god the result of this encounter with the word of god is what leads to what we call dominion you may have heard me say it again that dominion is not an impartation there is no anointing for dominion dominion is the resultant effect of your comprehending the ways of the kingdom this gives you authority the greek word exousia capacity to legislate are we together now encounter with the word of god colossians chapter 3 and verse 16 paul was speaking to the church in Colossae, and by extension the body of christ he said it this way let the word of christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom that the word of christ dwell in you richly and in all wisdom the word of christ can dwell in you but if it's not in wisdom you will not be able to draw it out and apply it accordingly there are many people who have access to scripture many people study their bibles but there is no methodical approach to their spiritual growth so if and when situations demand the release of the word of god they do not know how to coordinate the word of god like a system of advantage to produce victory i give you an instance the average believer does not understand the forces of redemption 
and the dimensions of victory are located to them so if you have a challenge the average believer would pray at random pleading the blood of jesus calling the fire of the holy ghost touching and agreeing taking communion laying hands on one another somehow you just suspect that one of those principles would work it's dangerous to live your spiritual life shadow boxing you can step into a level of accuracy where you know what spiritual principle is responsible for what outcome this is what is called mastery in the spirit and paul said he that strives for mastery is not crowned except he strives lawfully you are a blessing to the degree to which you can handle the principles and the keys of the kingdom are we in agreement this morning yes so believers have access to scripture but then many are not able to methodically study and understand the truth of god's word write this down please maybe i should just say this quickly scripture contains three things basically every time you study scripture you're exposed to three things number one promises every time you study scripture you are exposed to the promises of god tokens of his commitments to you number two every time you open up scripture you are exposed to principles these principles are hidden in stories these principles are hidden in parables listen to me if all you read in the bible is a story or a parable it has not benefited you the benefit from that scripture or that study comes when you uncover and unravel the mystery behind the story behind the parable so scripture contains promises scripture contains principles number three scripture contains prophecies We'll see you high and lifted up. You are shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Here is a prayer now. Listen. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Hallelujah. Second Peter chapter 1 from verse 3. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 3. In fact, let's start from verse 2. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 2. Here's what it says. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you so we know grace can be multiplied we know peace can be multiplied but the bible says through knowledge grace does not multiply through desire uh -uh. grace and peace grace in ministry grace in business every dimension of grace is knowledge dependent through knowledge of god and of jesus christ our lord verse 3 says according as his divine power has given us all things that pertain how many things all things that pertain unto life and godliness but it, it now comes through knowledge the knowledge of him that had called us to glory and virtue verse 4 it says whereby are given unto us great and exceeding precious promises that by this we might be the partakers of his divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in this world through lust the extent of the grace that we command in this kingdom is dependent on knowledge listen you have to pray for the grace to conquer ignorance in your life ignorance is deadly it will give authorization to the devil and his cohorts to destroy you and destroy your ministry john 1 verse 5 says the light shineth in darkness and darkness comprehended it not so the kingdom is a compendium 
of infinite possibilities but those possibilities depend on knowledge listen in this kingdom there is a principle that governs kingdom wealth and abundance there is a principle that governs restoration there is a principle that governs influence there is a principle that governs being anointed there is a principle that governs longevity it's not enough to just claim them arbitrarily you must understand the principles that lead to that outcome are we together i give you an example you are trusting god to live a meaningful life there is a principle that is responsible for a meaningful life deuteronomy 28 from verse 1 it says it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord to do and observe all that i command you this day it leaves you with a promise that you shall be exalted above the nations of the earth and that this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you joshua chapter 1 and verse 8 says this book of the law shall not depart from out of your mouth but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to not just to say to do all that is written therein he says then and only then you will have good success so to just claim good success arbitrarily is making a mockery of your destiny you must understand the requisite spiritual principles the encounter with the word is god speaking to us There are so many things that happen in our lives and we console ourselves sociologically by saying how can I lie Ashiria? have you heard that kind of statement it looks very sociologically comforting but let me tell you God has no business with many things that are happening to many people it, we we are receiving the fruits of our ignorance ignorance has a cost it can cost you your lifetime it can cost you your relevance it can cost you your influence The Bible tells us in Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 11, the will of God for us is not left in the dark. I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord. He says they are thoughts of good or peace and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end. We need to trust God for the grace to become like spiritual archaeologists, searching for the mysteries of the kingdom the principles of the kingdom that are responsible for the outcomes that we desire i give you another example are you still getting blessed this morning many people sir especially at this time of you know recession across the globe and then the pandemic has brought a lot of um um a lot of setback for many people especially financially now you're trusting god for increase wishing and claiming and complaining and getting angry at blessed people will not produce that result you have to go back to scripture the manual for effective living and find out god's idea the bible says it this way isaiah 51 it says look unto abraham your father and to sarah your mother that birthday it says i called him and i blessed him and i increased him that means understudy his life as my idea of what it means to be blessed are we together then you begin to study the principles of scripture and you see scattered through scripture the keys that control the blessing of the lord upon the life of an individual then you begin to study truths like there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. Then the Bible says a diligent hand shall be made fat. Is that true? You begin to study scriptures like he that walks with the wise shall be wise. But a companion of fools the Bible says shall be destroyed. Then you begin to learn that there is favor as an equation for success in the kingdom exodus 3 and 21 the bible says i will give these people favor in the sight of the egyptians and it shall come to pass that as ye go ye shall not go empty now when you find that truth you obtain grace to walk in keeping with the conditions 
that release the blessing apostle it looks like everybody does not like me it looks like all the helpers of my destiny are not here to help me i sympathize with you but that is not a correct statement because the bible says whoever wants friends you must sow that seed of friendship by becoming friendly are we together now there is a lot of ignorance in the body of christ please listen to me well-intentioned people sincere people respectfully speaking there are so many well-meaning believers across the plateau becoming victims of situations and circumstances and many people get angry and offended with god why should i have this kind of treatment i love jesus with all my heart i'm a believer you will say i'm a christian i go to church it takes more than going to church it takes more than getting born again you must encounter the word of god the methodologies of the kingdom then you will learn his ways in fact prophet micah prophesied that in the last days the mountain of the lord shall be exalted above other mountains and above other hills and he said all nations will flow through it he says they will tell one another come let us go to the mount of the lord to the house of jacob he says and there he will teach us his ways that is what we are going to learn he will teach us his ways you know how the disciples became apostles it was not just by impartation services for three and a half years they were immersed in a body of spiritual information it took only one day for their impartation but it took three and a half years the anointing will you thou anointest my head not my cup what needs the miracle is my head and i see the result of what happened on my head through my cup we need knowledge we need knowledge colossians chapter 1 and verse 9 apostle paul again praying over the church in Colossae. he prayed to the father that they might be filled with the knowledge of his will number one number two all wisdom number three spiritual understanding and that from a child thou hast known the holy scripture that is able to make you wise even unto salvation i'm trusting that in this first service the lord will plant in us an appetite for scripture not learning to preach not learning just to preach in a conference this is for your life they are life to those who find them the bible says and health to their flesh i detest ignorance and I'm not ashamed of any area where I'm in ignorance. In fact, many times I pray and I tell the Lord, reveal to me the areas of ignorance in my life so that I can contend for light. We rise in this kingdom by light. Apostle Paul said, I went up by revelation. We go up by revelation, not desire. Desire only pushes you to the place where you begin to engage revelation according to proverbs 18 and verse 1 it says through desire a man having separated himself seeketh and intermeddled with all wisdom desire separates you but it is knowledge that gives you authority in this kingdom are we blessed there are three blessings that come to the life of any believer when you encounter the word of god number one the first blessing you receive is the blessing of understanding write that down please understanding the fortitude to comprehend luke chapter 19 and verse 42 when you read that scripture the bible says jesus stood and wept over jerusalem he said oh jerusalem jerusalem if only you had known in this thy day the things that make for your peace he says but now they are hidden from you understanding is a real miracle
Luke chapter 24 and verse 45. Please give it to us. Understanding. The Bible says, Then open he their understanding that they might understand scripture. I think we should turn this verse into a prayer in one minute. Lord, open my understanding. I'm tired of looking but not seeing. I'm tired of hearing but not comprehending. I'm tired of shadow boxing my way through destiny. Grant me accuracy of perception and understanding. Is someone praying? You came to church. I was glad, he said, when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Because you learn the ways of God. You do not learn the ways of God in a bank. You do not learn the ways of God in a parliament. The church is the only authorized institution that can mentor and culture believers. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, grant me understanding. Grant me understanding. Hallelujah. Look at me. Spiritual understanding is a miracle. Just because you are educated in as much as secular education is concerned does not mean you understand spiritual things. Do not confuse secular education and enlightenment with spiritual understanding. Isaiah 29 and verse 11. Let me show you an interesting scripture. Isaiah 29 and 11. Is it possible that we read it together? Can you see from where you are seated? All right, let's try. One to read. And the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed. Read on. Which men deliver to one who is learned? What's his reply? Saying, read this, I pray thee. And he said, I cannot. Why? For it is sealed, not closed, sealed. Just because the Bible is open does not mean... That the seals have been broken it can be open and yet it is sealed next verse verse 12 and the book is delivered to him that is not learned saying read this i pray thee and he said i am not even learned in the first place so there is a realm where both the learned and the unlearned have to depend on the holy spirit he's the one who opens you up to scripture interpreting scripture just from an intellectual standpoint will only lead to legalism and confusion because when you read the bible from an intellectual standpoint let me tell you what you will meet you will meet a plethora of confusing statements you will meet a plethora of statements that cancel out one another at the end of it you will hate what you are reading because what you see here is not just a book like a novel it's a mystery that is encoded in a book and the Holy Spirit will have to open your eyes that you may behold the wondrous things out of his law. Are we together? Yes. So understanding, number two, very quickly, as we prepare to wrap up. The second blessing that we get from an encounter with the word is faith. Bible faith is a product of an encounter with the word of god romans chapter 10 and verse 17 faith faith romans 10 and verse 17 it says so then faith cometh wow look at me paul personifies faith faith is alive like a messenger it can come that means until it comes you don't have it faith cometh. there is something that calls faith into your life faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of god faith cometh. it can come to your life it can come to your ministry it can come to your business but it comes by hearing bible faith listen to me I submit to you with every sense of responsibility and every sense of respect many of the things that we practice that we call faith is not Bible faith believe me when I tell you this this is an uncomfortable truth but it is true 
most of the things that we do the bible does not call that faith real faith works real faith produces results let me define for you what faith is based on scripture and my experience faith is the name given to the action that you take based on your conviction of who god is and the integrity of his word the name given to the action not the believing believing is not faith it is part of the process of faith if all you do is believe your faith is not complete you have to understand this most of what we do is believing then we speak no that's not faith faith is the name given to the action you take that action of obedience derived from your understanding derived from your conviction look at this let me have one gentleman can i use you sir come watch this please stand here everyone look at this as far as your eyes can see hold this sir this is what you're looking for the handkerchief are we together now here's what many of us do in the name of jesus this is my handkerchief you are not lying it was destined to reach you in the name of jesus this is my handkerchief are we together now and while we are saying this the condition that was meant for receiving that handkerchief we don't find out what it is and we just say this is my handkerchief five years this is my handkerchief 15 years this is my handkerchief you are not lying but it doesn't mean you have it and someone comes sir. someone will come from behind and while he's saying this is my handkerchief he's walking and in two months he will pick what for 15 years you kept watching now you get angry and you say this is not fair for 15 years i've been seeing this no just believing and speaking will not give you your result this is a deliverance for someone until action is engaged you have not manifested faith every promise in the scripture has conditions attached to it until those conditions are fulfilled you have not committed god's integrity please understand this just the awareness of the possibilities does not bring its manifestation you must know the requisite condition attached to it there are conditions there are conditions are we together thank you sir thank you so it's not enough to just see what is yours in christ and speak what is yours in christ you must take it a step further to find out this is the benefit of meditation you are not done meditating until your responsibility your participatory responsibility is revealed if you do not find your responsibility you have not done meditating meditation is not just to make you aware that this is yours every dimension of result in the kingdom will require a role to play there is a participatory role that you have to play the cheapest of the blessings in the kingdom as far as receiving is concerned is salvation and even that one is not imparted to you automatically the gift is free but it must be received based on a condition that with your heart you will believe unto righteousness and then verbalize your commitment by making jesus lord so whilst an altar call is made for instance if you remain there and hope and wish you are saved you will still go to hell even though the substitutionary sacrifice of christ is a reality but it may not be a reality in your life hear me the bible says forever O lord thy word is settled in heaven no not your life in heaven it takes faith and the operation of the word for it to become a reality in your life so jesus teaching us to pray said this when you pray say your kingdom come by your will being done in earth as it is in heaven 
we must trust God for grace if there is anything to take home in this morning service is that there is a responsibility component as far as dominion in this kingdom is concerned it is true that God can answer prayer but just believing he will answer prayer just because you are in trouble the Bible says the Lord is nigh them that call upon him not them that are in trouble just because you are in trouble does not mean you will experience his salvation you must call upon him that's the condition attached to receive his help call upon me he said and I will answer then I will show you great and mighty things if you do not call upon him he has to respect your will it's safe to assume you do not need his help are we blessed yes let me give you an assignment please go back home and write all the dimensions of the kingdom the dimensions of results and spiritual possibilities that you seek to step into and through meditation and prayer to study of the Bible primarily and then relevant materials find out the conditions connected to that promise and then obtain grace from God to work in keeping with those conditions let me tell you this truly speaking when you fulfill the conditions allocated for the manifestation of a promise there is no power in existence that sustains the ability to stop you from entering that truth are we blessed finally and then we pray what is the third blessing that follows an encounter with the word of god stability write it down stability isaiah chapter 33 and verse 6 says wisdom and knowledge he says shall be the stability of your time your life is as stable as the knowledge and the wisdom that you have when you are perturbed by the vicissitudes of life is proof that you are not grounded yet in fact here's how apostle paul puts it please give us first corinthians chapter 15 and verse 58 first corinthians 15 58 therefore my beloved brethren look up please be ye steadfast unmovable always abounding in the work of the lord there is a dimension of spiritual stability that you must attain and it is knowledge that gives you that stability the bible says if you turn aside in the day of battle it is that your strength is small the wife of job came to him at the height of his predicament and said why don't you just curse god and die and job said no though he slay me i will trust him all the days of my appointed time he said i will wait i know something about god hallelujah understanding faith and stability but i think for many believers the challenge there is the faith part because we keep doing a lot of things believing we are manifesting faith and then we are surprised and then angry that our lives do not reflect what the Bible says should be if it is Bible faith I will say it again it always produces Bible faith produces there are many young people today respectfully speaking do you know the reason why their lives are full of tragedies the Bible says honor your father and your mother in the Lord that it shall be well with you and you shall have the length of days the level of dishonor that it is almost marketable to practice dishonor is the reason why many people are surrounded by ills they cannot explain because scripture cannot be broken you can be a prayer warrior you practice dishonor and watch the plethora of troubles that stand before you hallelujah you must embrace the full as far as producing results is concerned in your life 
and as we prepare to pray and wrap up this morning's service in addition to your encounter with the son of god giving you life and peace then your encounter with the office and the person of the holy spirit giving you direction giving you guidance fellowship and then empowerment you need this encounter with the word of god giving you faith giving you understanding that translates into real authority in the spirit and then stability in your life so that after 10 years you don't turn back and tell us i've been pretending i don't i don't i'm not sure of what i was teaching when you do not have knowledge your christian experience will frustrate you eventually you hear a lot of people tell you look this god thing i'm not in it again we used to be serious before we used to do this i'm we mumbari you hear them say no but i know whom i have believed and i am persuaded that he is able to keep that which is committed unto him against that day an encounter with the word of god are you blessed this morning please rise up on your feet as we pray rise up on your feet as we pray everyone my life changed when i paid attention to the word of god i'm honored today to be used by god doing the things that he's doing through my life and our ministry across the globe because the word of god is the maker of men the word of god is the maker of destinies listen to me for many of you the holy spirit is speaking to you through this sermon this morning you need to get back to the place of the word you need to reduce your time of running around men you need to reduce your time of activities and stay with the word stay with the word let it build you i commend you to god he says and to the word of his grace which is able to build you and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified two prayer points and we're done number one father open me up to the word of god grant me grace passion are you praying from the front to the back please pray passion for the word of god passion for the word of god not just religious activities i obtain grace grace to be a student of scripture i obtain grace to be knowledgeable i fight ignorance i fight ignorance from my life from my ministry i fight ignorance hallelujah um, I sat back whilst I stepped in um, I just sat quietly and such a burden came upon me and usually once the Spirit of God begins to put this burden it is because it is a response to someone's pain someone's hunger the Bible says we do not have a high priest who had not been touched with the feelings of our infirmity this is second service and there's no intention to keep us long uh, i believe that pastor is already so blessed and honored by our sacrifice standing through the weather but i assure you that every encounter that you have from yesterday up till monday would be worth any sacrifice the birth of anything valuable is painful praise the name of the lord and so whilst you're standing in one minute i'd like you to cry to the god of heaven father that which you have for me this morning i pray that i will be a full partaker of it can we lift our voices and pray
that may be a partaker of it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please be seated. God bless you. I'm wrapping up the last session that I started yesterday night on encounters and then we'll deal with something else in subsequent sessions but this is very very important um, this last segment for me was a revelation please listen let me have your attention it was a revelation that God gave me and the knowledge of what I'm about to teach you truly has changed my life it's brought me to dimensions that I'm not sure I otherwise would have been able to attain and so every time I have the privilege of teaching it across the body of Christ I teach it with an unusual passion because it came I didn't read it from any book it came by the Spirit of God and I truly believe that it sustains power and every time the word of God is communicated like this from such a depth of reality I want you to believe open up your spirit so that you can receive praise the name of the Lord but before I do this something interesting is about to happen here and I want you to pay attention you don't have to stand but whether you are an usher or not please I want you to participate in what is about to happen there are people here the grace for speed listen is coming upon them and what will happen is that the hand of god will come upon them and they will begin to run physically like you know someone running by the spirit i want you if you can please bring those people out this is a ministry of signs and wonders there's nothing superstitious about what is happening in the name of jesus there are people under the sound of my voice there are families under the sound of my voice it's a strange grace for speed i stretch my hands across the length and the breadth of this auditorium please bring them out very quickly help them please bring them out help them the bible says the hand of the lord came upon elijah and he began to run by reason of this impartation you will be surprised that in one month many of you will achieve things that for decades you've not been able to achieve there is a grace that sponsors this and i speak it upon your life please bring them Please bring them and ushers please help them so that they don't have to litter some ushers should be here you prayed and you asked him for a visitation Jesus is not theory the Bible says now the Lord is that spirit I'm under the shadow of your wings your influence is all over me I am under the shadow of yours Your influence is all over me I am under the shadow of your wings The spirit of delay The spirit of delay Retrogression is breaking from lives Break, believe me, believe what I'm telling you. The spirit of delay, age long captivities of delay, breaking at the instance of his word. I am under the shadow of your wings. Your influence is all over me. I am under the shadow of your wings. Listen, listen to me, brothers and sisters. Please listen to me. In this kingdom, there is a system of spiritual operation. 
that if you do not understand you will consistently be shortchanged by the devil speed does not just happen the bible says samuel spoke to them and said it was the lord that advanced moses and aaron for all the lives and the families here represented in the name of jesus by prophecy i shift you to new dimensions and for all of you connecting in the name that is above all names whether in ministry whether in business i decree and declare be shifted to new dimensions spiritually financially step into new levels in the name of jesus hallelujah father i pray you have brought these ones to change their lives they represent themselves they represent families here at this conference this crusade we decree and declare that that which you have done remains so in the name of jesus that you will return back with testimonies you will marvel and wonder at what begins to happen to your life in the name of jesus christ sir this gentleman lift your hands where you are two of you there is a grace coming on you take that grace now in the name of jesus christ you will never be the same i'm seeing that increase in ministry and in your lives the lord is shifting you to new levels by the spirit please open your mouth in one minute and begin to pray father do not leave me the way i have come i've come to the house of god please don't be distracted don't be distracted you just keep your gaze on jesus look beyond the man keep your gaze on jesus hallelujah 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 who is jonathan i'm hearing a name jonathan just i really wanted to teach and i still intend that will not stay long but i'm hearing a name jonathan who is that person jonathan you are holding a camera on your hand is there someone like that i'm seeing in the spirit you are holding a camera who is that what's his name is is the mic working please help is, is help. what's your name my brother my name is jonathan where are you coming from <laughs> it's all right oh where are you God. coming from i'm from blood state please just sit for a minute if you can you're from this state yes sir i want to pray for you because god is raising you to be a light to your family this is what i'm seeing by the spirit in the name of jesus the christ of god i pray for you everything that represents limitations it answers to the name of jesus right now hallelujah please listen we're going to we'll be seated shortly agnes i'm hearing a name agnes you are wearing black with a necklace is it the necklace black this is what i'm seeing is there someone like that agnes lord you took my pain away and then you gave me joy you're my peace my melody in the center of the storm you gave me a brand hallelujah this is the minister's role there are two of you please be seated there are two of you the grace for the prophetic is coming on you while you are seated there um, i just saw light a strong anointing coming on a particular man of god here in the name of jesus i decree and declare truly may you drink of that fountain a genuine grace step into new encounters in the name of jesus christ 
in the name of Jesus your ministry your life will never be the same hallelujah hallelujah pastor Sam house on the rock Gombe the Lord is revealing to me that you are stepping into a new season of visibility this is what I'm seeing in the spirit and there will be such a display of signs and wonders this is a dimension you have so desired and the Lord is saying he's bringing into into that grace I stretch my hands in the name of Jesus Christ marvelous light marvelous grace it comes upon your life in the name of Jesus Christ marvelous grace please don't think God is wasting your time God is answering age-long problems at once just to solve this thing if this is what happens in this service it was not a waste we serve a living God please listen to what I'm telling you we serve a living God God is not a theoretical religious God we serve a living God hallelujah the Lord is revealing someone to me I'm seeing your mother in Jude that's the the just university teaching hospital your mom I'm seeing a sick woman there please who is that person if, if we're unable to if we're able to just deal with that then even if it's 10 minutes we do with the word that's fine but I need to minister to someone I'm seeing your mother I don't know who that person is but I need to pray for that person madam what do you do what's your name you're a pastor I need to pray for you oh there are people in the overflow goodness it doesn't matter which overflow you are you just focus on your screen and believe God believe God the Lord is still ministering to me there's someone your mother is sick who is that this gentleman where is she in the hospital what's your name huh who is Japhet? I'm hearing the name yes, Japhet. Sir. Yes, sir. What's your name? Japhet. Stand up. Because the Lord wants to do a miracle, not only for your mother, but for your family. Yes, sir. In the name of Jesus. Kapros. This is oppression. Oh. The Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. He says he went about healing all they that were oppressed. Every sickness is an oppression. And in the name of Jesus, here at this conference, I stand in agreement with the pastor, the angel over this house, and I declare, unto Mama we speak. Let there be a miracle right now. Let there be a miracle. And even for you, my friend, let there be a supernatural miracle for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. I'm seeing a gentleman, you used to work in a bank. Something happened, I don't know if it was an issue, and was it that you were relieved? Let me just talk to you, you'll be the last person. You are wearing brown. It's a face mask a nose or face mask who is that make sure you don't please verify so that you don't think we're lying what's your name sir who is samuel i'm the one sir. samuel yes what sir. bank first bank sir. first bank yes, when sir. were you relieved 2018 sir the lord himself is honoring you i'm saying that this is an oppression you are a very sincere person but there is something that comes on you and misrepresents you let me use him and prophesy to someone in the name of jesus anyone conspiring with dark powers manipulating your life and your destiny in the name that is above all names i declare them out of your life out of your life shout a believing amen out of your life sir the bible says believe the lord your god don't cry so shall you be established he said believe these prophets so shall you prosper i stand by the grace of god and i say it in the open not in the secret that in the name of jesus christ may the lord restore your honor double fold in the name of jesus christ sir this man the man holding the mic I know you are holding a mic for someone but God wants to speak to you the Lord is saying I should tell you that the book of remembrance is opened over you what do you do sir 
you are a businessman are you a businessman sir i'm seeing the month of may june july these are strange months of increase and this will come by the spirit of god it is the book of remembrance the bible says that night the king could not sleep i'm praying for someone in the name of jesus whatever has made you forgotten i stand by the grace of god and we open unto you the book of remembrance in the name of jesus christ i speak over your business and in the name of jesus christ sir i'm praying that not only will god restore but god will lift you may june july this month will be strange months of increase for you in the name of jesus and our auntie the pastor may god grant you grace multiplied grace for intercession multiplied grace in the name of jesus christ i'm seeing a woman here this is one two three four five years you are trusting god for the fruit of the womb your time has come who is that person five years the lord is showing me five years you're trusting god for the fruit of the womb let's just settle this please if they can go back to their seats god bless you ladies and gentlemen five years you're trusting god for the fruit of the womb who is that person please let me just pray for you quickly now the lord is that spirit where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty look at me my dear look look what is happening to her this is a, a a lady that has been oh dear i'm praying for you may you carry superior dimensions of his presence so that you can be a blessing to people listen the world is tired of noise the world is tired of noise we need to be carriers of divine presence carriers of divine realities i write these things to you O excellent theophilus of all that jesus began to do and teach now you imagine please don't be embarrassed but you imagine what these families may be going through imagine some of the things that they you imagine what happens this is africa and you know what happens naysayers false visions people who come with all kinds of things but there is a name that is above every other name yes there is i want to pray for you my dear sisters listen to me i assure you there is a god that sits in heaven don't be too used to pain god is able to roll that reproach i pray for you and i want you to believe in this prayer i know that many people have prayed for you but you see every challenge is at the mercy of the grace that confronts it i pray for you in the name of jesus if there is any operation of witchcraft responsible for this as i'm speaking to you right now except god is not god those chains must be broken i declare now chains be broken 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 according to the time of life i prophesy to you return with your children return with your children return with your children by this time 2022 you return with your children in the name of jesus regardless the medical condition we veto it by the power of the word and we decree and declare that only the counsel of god will come to pass in the name of jesus please be seated god bless you god bless you please do not miss especially tomorrow night i emphasize again the lord wants to bring us visitations and our hearts must be open to receive for those who can they can return back to their seats and then while i'm teaching please if anyone is under the anointing you don't have to bring them just help them so they don't injure themselves praise the lord i spoke about encounters and levels of encounters please do well to get the teaching for yesterday 
and then the first service this morning because the bible says to buy the truth money is not the only currency passion is currency hunger is currency you can use hunger to buy the truth you can use passion commitment to buy the truth in the name of jesus christ my dear just lay your hands on her just do what i'm asking you to do in the name of jesus i stretch my hands let there be peace right now and in the name of jesus christ let everything be over praise god thank you that's all right so we began to discuss the subject of encounters how that if you want to excel in this kingdom not only ministry but in the kingdom that your excelling depends on the kinds and the levels of spiritual encounters are we together and then i began to share with us levels of spiritual encounters according to job chapter 42 do not forget that scripture in verse 5 job said i have heard of you with the hearing of the ear but now my eye seeth thee i have heard of you with the hearing of the ear but now my eye seeth thee and i spoke yesterday about the encounter with the son of the living god apostle john told us he said this is the record that god hath given us eternal life but he structured the administration of eternal life such that until you encounter the son you cannot have that life you cannot bypass the son and route through an angel or route through a man of god to have eternal life it has to be the encounter with the son that gives eternal life are we together and i told us the blessings that follow that encounter the life of god access to righteousness access to the grace of god then we discussed yesterday about an encounter with the person and the ministry of the holy spirit i told you that the holy spirit as a person you can have an encounter with him hallelujah it says not by might not by power but by my spirit the possibilities that we command in this kingdom are a product they are a derivative of a relationship i did say yesterday that every other religion and every other spiritual practice does not demand relationship when you go to a herbalist he does not need to know your name you do not need to know his name you do not need to know the tribe all he needs is what are you here for and if he can give you what you're here for that's fine that's all right but when you come into the faith life god demands a relationship and that the power and the possibilities that you command are out of that relationship are we together now yes and that we stand to benefit guidance direction and empowerment i did tell you that the holy spirit is the revealer of the word i have many things to tell you the bible declares but ye cannot bear them now jesus is speaking he says how be it when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into all truth the spirit of god the spirit of grace the spirit of truth hallelujah yeah. that the holy spirit is also the confirmer of the word the bible says and the lord walking with them confirming the word with signs following then i said the holy spirit is the custodian of the anointing the administration of spiritual power resides in the office of the holy spirit he is not only the custodian of it he is the administrator of the anointing praise the name of the lord yes and then this morning we spoke about the encounter with the word of god not just as the person jesus the word of god as a compendium of the mysteries of the kingdom the methodologies of the kingdom jesus the way there is a dimension of encounter that reveals it exposes you to the principles of the kingdom i told you that the bible primarily contains three things number one promises number two principles number three prophecies so every time you study scripture and that from a child thou hast known the holy scripture which is able to make you wise it says unto salvation 
that maturity in the kingdom depends on your encounter with the word dominion in the kingdom depends on your encounter with the word knowledge of the methodologies of the kingdom and i told us in the first service that the challenge with most believers is that we have random spiritual informations that are not sequentially arranged in a way and a manner that can produce victory in our lives so we know that the blood of jesus works we know that the name of jesus works we about the fire of the holy ghost we know about communion we know about the seed and we engage them at random with no mastery of what spiritual principle is responsible for what outcome paul admonishing his son in the gospel timothy said if a man strives for mastery he says that man is not crowned until he strives lawfully every outcome in this kingdom has spiritual principles that lead to it God is a God of systems and what he does is that he introduced that spiritual reality and then he creates systems around it for continuity are we together praise the name of the Lord so we challenged ourselves in the first service that we must contend for specific spiritual knowledge if your church for instance as a man of God is not growing just arbitrarily believing that I'll just pray and fast at random no 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 that may not be the solution the Bible says Proverbs 18 and verse 1 through desire it says a man having separated himself he seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom we must be able to study the spiritual principles that are responsible for what outcome are we together and in this final session here at the second service i want to teach on the last encounter this man has changed my life and i pray in the name of jesus that it will affect you like it did me in jesus name encounter with the body of christ the fourth encounter that every one of us would require if you must excel in this kingdom it's not only an encounter with the son it's not only an encounter with the spirit it's not only an encounter with the word you need an encounter with this mystery entity called the body of Christ mm. the body of Christ is a very mysterious entity Jesus himself began to speak the first time the word church will be mentioned in the Bible, the Ecclesia. He said, who do men say that I am? So the revelation of the church was a strategy to end confusion. They were not clear about his identity. Who do men say that I am? Some said you are Elias. Some said you are one of the prophets. And he said, okay, you've worked with me. What is your verdict? Who do you think I am? And Peter, the Bible says, speaking by the Spirit, he said, I know who thou art. Thou art Christ, the Son of the living God. And he said, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And he says, thou art Peter, and upon this rock, the rock is not Peter, the rock is this strategy. Upon this strategy, I will build my church, and I will build it in a way and a manner that the gates of hell will not prevail against it so the church is not just a building please listen carefully the church is not even just people the church is a spiritual strategy the only strategy that is able to fulfill the agenda of the father is called the church the church is more than a people the church is more than a building the church is a spiritual strategy invented by the intelligence of god himself the only platform that is able to host god the only platform that is able to advance the kingdom the only platform that is able to communicate this global harvest is called the church and you need an encounter with the body of christ work with me let's look at a few scriptures number one first corinthians please chapter 11 first corinthians chapter 11 we'll begin to read from verse 23 but the verse of emphasis is 27 down to 30. a little background please paul it, this was at a point where 
Paul was on his voyage carrying out his apostolic ministry and the church in Corinth at this time was experiencing such an outpouring of the Holy Spirit there were signs wonders baptisms miracles administrations of several dimensions and there was a very big confusion in the church there was a mix of several things people who were taking the wine for communion and they were getting drunk people who were prophesying arbitrarily people who were having all kinds of things and Paul needed to come and bring decency and order are we together now that was the whole idea behind first and second Corinthians to the end that all things be done decently and in order and in order for him to do that he now had to sit them down in a conference and then compartmentalize the operations of the Holy Spirit and give meaning to the experiences they were having because they didn't know the name of what they were having was called word of knowledge word of wisdom it was paul who began to define to give names and compartmentalize these operations he was an amazing man and in one of his discourse please back to the scripture he now brought a mystery of the lord's body the table and the cup for i have received of the lord that which I also delivered to you so we know where it came from that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed he took bread uh-huh and when he had given thanks he broke it and said take it this is my body take note which is broken for you do this in remembrance of me 25 and after the same manner he took the cup when he had supped, he said this cup is the new testament in my blood this do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me 26 for as often as ye eat this bread and ye drink this cup ye do show the lord's death till he comes now the mystery is unveiled from 27 wherefore is a caution now whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the lord unworthily he shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the lord understand what he's saying here 28 but let a man examine himself and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup 29 the bible says whoever eats and drinks unworthily he will eat and drink damnation to himself and the sin that he has done is not discerning the lord's body as a result of this verse 30 he says many are weak look at this now as a result of this sin of not discerning the lord's body many not few are weak many are sickly and many do sleep if the Bible says many, it means many. That means there are lives today that are limited. There are lives today that are weak. There may be ministries that are weak simply because they could not discern the Lord's body. Now, he was not talking about bread, wafers, and wine. Those were just emblems. He was talking about his body. Are we together now that even though i am the head i have a body that you must discern and failure to discern the body of christ it would cost your destiny it would cost your church it would cost your ministry what is in the body of christ the body of christ listen to me is the only entity that can host the possibilities of god the body of christ is not a church the body of christ is the collective group of believers together you have to understand this now i'll explain a few things and i pray that god will grant us the grace to understand please look up the way god works with us is that he reveals himself dimensionally you have to understand this god is almighty he is i am but when it has to do with the revelation of himself he fragments himself into dimensions and reveals to people are we in agreement on that so if you are oral roberts he will reveal that rafa dimension 
as the healing God. Are we together? If you are Benny Hinn, you will know him as Savior. Several dimensions. And the way God deals with us is that when you begin your spiritual journey, you usually will begin on a neutral ground. But as you progress, God will now begin to shift you to the area of your call. And the area of your calling the area of your commissioning will demand certain trainings are we together so say for instance there are two gentlemen can i use you again thank you let's have one more person we have to hurry up so we end on time thank you watch this thank you watch this gentleman let's assume that these gentlemen began their spiritual journeys together are we together praying maybe fasting if this man has been ordained to be a prophet and this man has been ordained to be an evangelist somewhere in the course of their training the holy ghost is now going to begin to customize his dealings with them you will find out that two of them will not be able to work together again because the context of their trainings will change this man is called into the prophetic chances are that an unusual release of the grace for prayer will come upon him even more than what this man would experience so there will be problems because when they pray after three hours this guy is tired he wants to go home but this guy is just about to start because he will need to labor to be able to obtain that grace are you seeing now something is happening to their trainings at the end of it this man will get the prophetic grace this man will be an evangelist but now here's where the problem is there is a side effect to the way god trains us and he left it intentionally the side effect is that when god is focusing on your area of call he usually will not introduce you to other dimensions that are there but it does not mean those dimensions will not be needed in your life listen carefully so while this man is learning the prophetic the holy ghost will not tell him anything about administration the holy ghost will not tell him anything about excellence the holy ghost will not tell him anything about leadership the scope of his training is prayer fasting warfare the prophetic revelation are you seeing this just as an example if this guy starts a ministry only with that dimension very soon the area he has neglected will start showing in his life are you getting blessed now whilst god is building him in the area of the prophetic there is another person who god is building in the area of administration and excellence if this man is not careful all he will have is intellectual knowledge and a passion for excellence he would downplay prayer he would downplay fasting he would downplay the prophetic he will also start an organization that is excellent but full of demons excellent but full of sickness excellent but full of all kinds of failure so here's what god did he will fragment himself and reveal to you but leave you with an assignment to connect with the larger body for the other part of what you do not have are you getting that now you have to understand this so if this man acknowledges that as powerful as my dealing is that is not all there is to god he can now honor this man for learning administration now administration has been added to his prophetic he can now have a healthy church that prophesies and is still excellent hearing is where the devil has deceived many of us because because of the strength of the result that comes from your training and the pride of men we usually find it difficult to acknowledge other dimensions that are not captured in our lives why because eventually come sir eventually you are going to have mentors mentees who are learning under you and they are only going to learn what is your dimension of reality are we together now and so when they see a level of excellence like this it is your assignment as a mature spiritual leader to be unashamed to tell them i will teach you the dimension given to me but don't you think that is all you should learn when you find another dimension don't fight it embrace it and add it it is the body of christ please sit down
so the administrator mentors young people and tell them if you see all these guys praying and fasting don't mind them the only devil is the one in your mind you may be right until the real attack comes are we together now oh yes i assure you there are real attacks the realm of the spirit does not play games is a real attack now at that point you are confused the people you are raising come to meet you and say pastor you taught us to be excellent my books are intact i did my job well i submitted the proposal why is it not working the answer is here and yet because you have not connected you will have to create a theology to explain away and tell the man maybe you are not serious many of the answers we look for are not in heaven they are already in the body of christ if only we have the eyes to discern the graces that god has put so i'm here now with a prophetic ministry prophesying but people are stealing money because there's no excellent administration you are prophesying but there's trouble you can't raise leaders are we seeing are you seeing that now yes so i go to god and say lord why is ministry not working even though i'm a genuine prophet of god the answer god will tell you he has already sent the answer the answer does not have to come to you directly but once the answer is in the body of christ it is still yours are you getting what i'm saying now yes this has been the age-long explanation of the limitations that are in the lives of very great people because for some reason and i'm, I'm saying this passionately again because this is my own state there is something called the unity of faith unity does not mean uniformity we're never going to do the same thing let me just tell you the truth however there must be a recognition and we must be unashamed to mentor the people that god is bringing to us to acknowledge the fact that we do not have all of god as far as the dispensing of truth is concerned for we see in part and we prophesy in part so when i come here so please can i use you sir i am able to hold reverend akila's hand yes even though you call me great apostle joshua selman and i am grateful but there are dimensions that if i want i must have to come to him and acknowledge the dealings of god on his life if i ignore the grace on him i will still be anointed in my area of call but suffer in other areas let me give you an instance within minutes i spoke to people here who had problems do you know there are many voices that in five minutes can end the captivity of families but because you have not discerned many of the problems that we have the answers are around the body of christ god bless you sir thank you in the body of christ there is a woman who did not go to school and yet raised 12 children and all those children are responsible you think it's just motherhood there has to be an anointing making that happen and yet there is someone else please don't feel bad struggling with two children if only you can discern that the answer it doesn't always have to be preachers this is why the gathering of the saints is powerful because you are not only receiving from the man teaching the person seated next to you may be carrying a grace that is the answer to your age-long problem is why pride is a destroyer an encounter with the body of christ you've heard me say i'm a product of many anointings it was right here in joss that i traveled down to attend one of reinhard bonkers crusades i was in that crowd when i saw this man doing great things i would have said i'm a man of god too that's what we say that's the deception that keeps us small thank you for watching our entire video today if you feel you can bless someone please join us and spread the gospel by sharing this video on your social media